What's incredible about a telephoto macro lens is that you're not only investing in a lens that can capture stunning macro shots, but it can also capture sharp and brilliant portraits thanks to the focal length. And that is exactly what brings us to the Nikon Z 105mm f2.8 lens, which not only shows off features of a modern lens, it features excellent image quality, good stabilization, and in my opinion, great value. Nikon's newer macro lenses are the 50mm f2.8 and the 105 f2.8. While the 50mm option is less expensive, and while both lenses allow you to capture high quality photos and macro shots that have a one by one reproduction ratio without needing any additional accessories, the 105mm telephoto macro lens does give you the advantage when photographing more sensitive subjects as you will have a greater reach with the telephoto lens versus the 50mm normal focal length. The newer 105 f2.8 macro lens for the Nikon mirrorless cameras weighs noticeably less than the older f mount version. And this is due to the fact that the newer lens is mostly made of plastic, with only the bottom part that attaches to the camera being made out of metal. I'm personally very careful with my equipment, but if you're clumsy and you easily run into things, you may want to be careful to not damage your filter thread, as it is not made out of metal. The filter thread, by the way, is 62mm, and if you want to know all the technical specs, please check the link in the video description down below. The lens has a manual focus switch, and a macro focus limiter switch, which is helpful when you only want to focus on close macro shots. On top of the lens, you will find a little OLED display that allows you to rotate between your f-stop settings, focus scale, and reproduction ratio scale. What's annoying though is that the display shuts off every 10 seconds and you have to keep pushing the display button to turn it back on should you rely on the little display. Now the function button is quite nice as you can program it with various settings, and last but not least, besides the focus ring, there is an additional control ring that you can also customize in your camera. When it comes to the image quality of this fast 105mm macro prime lens, a blind man could tell you that the sharpness and contrast captured with this lens are simply beautiful. I think it may be interesting looking at a comparison with the older version of this lens from 2006, so I captured two comparisons which you can also look at yourself in closer detail if you check out the Google Drive download link in the video description down below. So let's go ahead and check out how these two lenses compare. So let's go ahead and check out the f2.8 settings on both lenses. I'm going to use the compare tool. On the left we have the older lens from 2006 and on the right we have the newer version from 2021. Let's go ahead and zoom in and take a look at how sharp both of these lenses are. We can immediately tell that both lenses are very sharp in the center. Zooming in at different spots, we can see that the focus may have not been perfectly matched on both images, but we can tell that both lenses are very sharp and perhaps the newer version of this lens is slightly sharper. Now I'm going to go ahead and apply lens correction and we can immediately see that there is significant vignetting around the edges of both images that is being corrected. I'm going to undo and redo the lens correction and we can see that both lenses have an equal amount of vignetting at f2.8. Let's take a look at f4. I'm going to use the comparison tool once again. On the left this time we have the newer version and on the right we have the older version of the lens. I'm going to apply lens correction once again and we can see that at f4 the lens still has some vignetting. Both lenses still have some vignetting. And when zooming in, we can once again see very sharp images. The right image is loading here for a second. We can see both lenses are very, very sharp. Zooming into a corner, we can tell that the focus was not identical, but both photos are sharp and I cannot tell one lens apart from the other. Looking at f5.6, now we have the older version on the right and the newer version on the left. I'm going to apply lens corrections once again, and we can tell that there is still a very tiny bit of vignetting left, even at f5.6. This matches the results on DX or Mark, and you will also notice that the lens has a little bit of distortion, but it is very easily corrected. When zooming in, we can once again see very sharp results. Now let's jump up to F10 and take a look at how the image quality evolves as we stop down the aperture. 
I'm going to apply lens correction once again on both images. We can see a very, very tiny bit of distortion that is corrected, but no more vignetting beyond f5.6. Both images are very sharp and produce very similar image quality. Looking at the corner, both lenses perform very well. And let's quickly look at the other comparison as well. Once again, if you look at the video description down below, you can find a Google Drive download link. I'm gonna check out f6.3. And once I apply lens correction, we can see that there's no more vignetting left above f5.6. And we can tell both lenses are very sharp. We would not be able to tell them apart. Now the point where the image quality of both lenses starts to weaken is at f16, I would say. You will start getting a softer image and you will lose some of that beautiful sharpness. As we can see here, some of that sharpness is gone, but where it gets very noticeable is at f22 and above. Now, of course, you can always work your magic when you're editing your photos and every lens is going to have some sort of weak point that eventually kicks in but in overall a very sharp lens very little distortion and vignetting that goes up to around f5 f6 but of course can be easily fixed in your editing software the older version of this lens may not offer all the newest bells and whistles but when it comes to image quality it is not far off from the newer version and it does have some similarities so if you're really interested in getting an incredible macro lens for your Nikon camera, you may want to consider getting your hands on the older version if you can find a used one as it could save you some money and you could also easily use the older version on your new Nikon mirrorless camera with an adapter. Since there is no switch on the lens itself, you have to access your camera's menu in order to enable or disable vibration reduction. There, you will be able to choose normal or sport mode. I made two tests with no VR enabled then VR normal enabled, and finally VR sport mode enabled. We can easily conclude that the vibration reduction works great, and when filming handheld, it would be silly not to take advantage of it. So what's the actual experience like using such a telephoto macro lens? Now we mentioned the focus limiter switch earlier. And for those who don't know what that is for, let me explain. So since you have such a long and wide focus range, your camera and lens might at times get confused as to what you actually want to focus on. If your subject is a macro subject and you want to focus up very closely, you may want to enable the switch so your camera and lens know to only focus on that limited range. It can save you some trouble at times. Now this is a fast and true f2.8 lens, but you will find the closer it gets to one by one magnification, your camera, instead of showing you f2.8, which you set, might show you something like f3 or f4. And this is because Nikon is a bit more technical than other camera manufacturers, and they show you the actual true aperture. The closer you get to one by one magnification, you will lose some stops and your lens and camera will show you that true aperture. And this brings me to the next topic, which is taking advantage of vibration reduction, which works great, but also not shying away from increasing that ISO. I'd much rather sacrifice a little bit of image quality, increasing that ISO, but making sure that I capture my subject with an appropriate shutter speed. When you are focusing at a macro subject, things can be moving quite fast, so a fast shutter speed is quite vital. DNH has a great page where they go into the details of the challenge of depth of field in macro photography. And one important takeaway is that the closer you get to one by one magnification, the more limited your depth of field will be. So even with an amazing macro lens and the 105mm macro by Nikon being no exception and an advanced autofocus system, you may have to rely on your manual focus ring at times because only relying on your camera and lens may make you miss your focus at times, as this is a universal challenge when shooting macro photography. To summarize my review of the 105mm macro lens for the Nikon mirrorless cameras, this lens is simply a no-brainer. The lens delivers great value given the stunning image quality and stunning image quality we define by great sharpness, great contrast 
and practically no chromatic aberration. This lens is a win-win option given that it's not only a macro lens, but it can also be used for a portrait lens. Given the compression, you can take some stunning portraits. And if you're creative, you can also use this for a landscape lens. So if you're a serious photographer and you do want a macro lens and or a portrait lens, consider this as an option as it's priced just around $1,000 I believe it's currently on sale for about 950 US dollars. If my video was helpful to you and I was able to answer some of your questions, please consider using my Amazon affiliate links in the video description down below and also subscribe to the channel if you would like to see more of my content. And if you have any additional questions about this amazing lens, please do not hesitate to let me know in the comment section down below. I'm usually pretty good about responding to each and every one of you. And I'll see you in the next one.